What's good, everybody? It is your boy, Rough Like A Clutch 247, and we are here giving you guys part two of the best ability stacks to have in CFM on the defensive side of the ball. Now, we went through the offensive side. You guys want to see that video? That'll be in the description or at the last video that's going to be shown up in the cards in the back. And if you guys want to see a certain position that you want positions for and don't even want to sit here and see the whole thing, you guys can go in the comments down below or look at the chapters and look for the timestamps to go through each and every one just to help you guys out a little bit more. But right now we are going to go, actually, we're not going to go to the um, defensive line first. We're actually going to go to the kickers part first. Um, yes, I know kickers and punters. This is like they have abilities too. So we're gonna go to Justin Tucker and we're gonna show you guys what to do first. So here, if you have a kicker like a Justin Tucker, a Young Hoku, or anybody like that with 85 overall, the first thing you're gonna need is Zen Kicker. Justin Tucker gets this on him automatically, so it doesn't even matter. That means kicks over 45 yards, the kick meter is gonna be mad slow, like it's on rookie mode, it's gonna help you out. Then you go and you put on focus kicker. That means anything under 45. So what the thing they did here was like focus kicker and Zen kicker. It used to be an ability last year. I pretty, I'm pretty sure that it used to be only just one, just literally one ability where it's like, oh, it's on the slow meter no matter where it is. But then they kind of switched it up. So now kicks under and over 45 yards. So that means no matter where they kick, the kicking meter is going to be slow. And then the last spot is completely up to you. It's completely preference. So you got clutch kicker, which means whenever they sit here and want to ice you, it will you know, it, basically you wouldn't even need ice. The ice wouldn't even affect you. It'll just go back to a normal uh, kick and it will put you in a back to the kicking meter. Or you can do position kicker. That means like the whole kicking arc, if you want to uh, see it accurately and do it all like that you can have this on as well. Now, when it comes to which one that you most likely should have, I will say clutch kicker, because um, if you already have the focus kicker, which means the kicking meter is already slower, you should know if you can make the kick or not. And with Justin Tucker, you can kick it from like the 43, 44 yard line, almost with ease if you aim it right. So you really wouldn't need precision kicker. And if somebody, uh, what you call it, if somebody sits here and ices you, you probably wouldn't even get to see the whole precision kicker. So clutch kicker definitely should be the move and this should be your stack for kickers and punters. Now for punters, I would advise for precision kicker strictly because if you want to pin somebody exactly right on a dot, then this is what you use to put it on there. So basically you have focus and zen kicker on clutch kicker for kickers and precision kicker for punters. And now let's go over to the D-line. Here for the D-line, we're gonna go and look at Miles Garrett, who has everything in the game. You guys see 95 run stopper, speed rusher, and power rusher. Everything is open for him. Um, and the difference that I'm gonna tell you guys between the right end, well, the defensive ends and the left outside linebackers, it's a huge difference and can give you a lot more diversity on each side, but if you do have somebody that's on the edge and then you do have somebody that's at the outside linebackers, I'm gonna show you guys the difference. But right now we're gonna go ahead and show you guys the ends. Right here, we're basically gonna take out edge threat and put in edge threat elite. I don't care if somebody has fearless, I don't care if anybody has, um, what you call it, secure protectors. Like, this is basically an edge threat and an under pressure in one. You're gonna need it. If it's unlocked, you're gonna need it. Number two, you need double or nothing. Double or nothing gives you a, a guaranteed dominant win as soon as they have two rush points on their thing and they get it gradually. And with somebody who, with Miles Garrett, who most likely is four or five, he will basically do this twice a drive. So he will take those points away and do what he wants. Here, when the rush of points is full, El Toro is one thing that you need on D-line. At first, this El Toro used to be a user thing to do, which is all you would have to do is just use it, flick down on a stick, and then just go rush up the quarterback and it's a guaranteed rush. But now if you do this by itself, oh, it's, it's, it's kind of nasty. And um, the last thing that you'll probably need is an inside stuff. This is most like, so this right here, actually for the outsides, 
you'll probably need um where is that yeah no outsiders so edge that elite l toro double or nothing and no outsiders is most likely what you would need to use on the edges but if you want to stop the run more and you kind of like just one double or nothing to go off you could take off the edge third elite it's completely up to you and you could go with inside stuff so no outsiders inside stuff double or nothing and an el toro or a edge threat elite okay you can do this combination right here and help you out tremendously because nobody's going to run the ball against you and when they do pass you get edge threat elite and double or nothing going off at the same time and right here this is basically preference so you can do blitz which means they'll the resistant bars will be wiped out so that means every time that their resistant bars wiped they can get easy pressure every single time um fear mongers like while they engage in blockers it's going to be a um what you call it they're going to give you pressure without even being at the quarterback so he's going to overthrow it a lot more um horn stoppers specifically for the run momentum shift um you'll lose any progress towards the zone on wait while well, they're in the zone all on field opponents are knocked out of the zone or lose any progress towards it which is crazy i've never had this so like if somebody has their omaha or somebody has their um double or nothing maybe trust freight train anything of that matter it's going to get wiped out by second a quarterback that's actually kind of tough and relentless it means their rush pass attempts are free that means they would not have to do anything they they won't they don't have to uh, basically give up anything to get a rush point they're just going to have it happen so in this point and they're unstoppable force i always use unstoppable force because then they just win block sheds one on one all by themselves it basically is another edge threat to an edge threat so in my opinion with the x factors number one is unstoppable force number two i'm going to go relentless three I kind of like Fearmonger if you have somebody that doesn't have Fearless on their quarterback. Number four, Momentum Shift. I do like Momentum Shifts. Run Stopper will be up there at two and three, or maybe number one, because if you like want to just stop the run, you can get you can have all your abilities stop the pass. To, that means to stop the pass, and then you have Run Stopper. So that means if they feel like, oh, I'm gonna run the ball, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um. But here, Blitz is actually another one as well. So actually, no, I'm gonna do Unstoppable Force 1, Blitz 2, Relentless 3, Momentum Shift 4, Fairmonger 5. Fairmonger used to be up there for me, but now it's not really the same. Because like I said, if somebody has Fearless and things of that nature, it's kind of like, it kind of neglates that. But um, I haven't really used it that much this year. As a matter of fact, last time I'm gonna change it, Unstoppable 1, Blitz 2, Fairmonger 3, Relentless four momentum shift five. I want to kind of I want to use momentum shift now. Like I feel like this would only work for a D tackle. If you have edges that has unstoppable force and things of that nature, then let them go off and then have the momentum shift go when the D tackles actually get something. You know what I'm saying? So maybe maybe that might be that might be the move. But like I said, if you have these tailed up on the other sides and that's great if you have lower overall such as as a double or nothing inside stuff outsiders and you can only have an edge threat then cool you can kind of change it up to where one person has a defensive rally you need somebody to have defensive rally on a defensive line to go on through everybody not everybody needs to have defensive rally only one person needs it so if somebody doesn't have that much um x no not xp uh overall up to get um an ability on definitely 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 you need to have somebody with defensive rally but these are the best ones to have um even a bogo i'm not gonna lie one of the more budget ones to have let's just say we take no outsiders out we'll have a defensive rally and we'll take the edge threat off bogo bogo defensive rally inside stuff double or nothing actually works because with defensive rally all their let I me mean, they'll grant a bonus rush point to all defense alignment on third or fourth down if somebody's wiped down to like one or two you get an extra one with defensive rally and then with bogo you're granted a free pass rush once per play after spending a rush point so basically you almost don't even lose one and then you gain another one on third and fourth down so it's kind of nasty and then it can trigger double or nothing to go off inside stuff works as well and it's just it's just nasty but 
if you are to dominate the pass, then you are to use this El Toro inside stuff, edge 30 lead double or nothing, or take out the El Toro and put in no outsiders. Now here for the defensive tackles, things that you would need for defensive tackles to actually make them look very, very nice. Um, El Toro is definitely one of the ones that you'll need. Um, another one is inside stuff 100%. Uh, you don't need no outsiders here. Like I said, you do need like a defensive rally on one of them. So I would prefer it on a D tackle and double or nothing. Double or nothing inside stuff. El Toro and defensive rally goes so stupid on a D tackle. It's ridiculous. Um, no outsiders wouldn't work from the inside going out because then you just bug out. Um, but if defensive rally isn't going to be used on him, then 100% I would not mind using a stone wall or actually Mr. Big Stop is kind of underrated. It will start. Wait, why does it? Why is it worded like that? This ability will start in third or fourth down with at least half of the momentum pass rush points. So Mr. Big Stop paired up with um, defensive rally and things of that nature. That would actually benefit you to get better pass rush. Uh, instant rebate is refunded once he successfully sh uh, shed blocks. This is more like the budget stuff that you can have that I would not mind having. But if it's like leagues where you cannot stack any of these stuff, then yeah, 100%. The instant rebates is really underrated. Bogo is underrated. Big Stop is underrated. Um, like I said, Persistent. Like, Persistent, I wouldn't say put it on every single person. Because if they don't have an X Factor, this wouldn't even this wouldn't even be a thing to use. But if they do have an X Factor, Persistent could be on there. Because, like, if you get tackled for a loss as a running back, you'll insta get, instantly get knocked out the zone. Persistent, it might give you more of a boundary to like get knocked out of the zone so like if you get tackled for a loss maybe you have to do that twice to get knocked out the zone if you have for wide receivers let's just say uh consecutive passes i mean consecutive targets on the pass normally it's three now to probably get bumped up to five or something like that that's what persistent really is on the corners don't allow 20 yards maybe it's don't allow 40 yards you know what i'm saying so persistent could be snuck in there and things about pass committed and run committed i don't even know where yeah and run committed you're gonna need to sell it you're gonna need to sell the run commit you gotta do run commit and they'll sit here and it will do it pass committed the same thing pass committed this will kind of tell your opponent that you're actually pass committing at certain points so then it will make them start running the ball more but if you do got the inside stuff and things of that nature it's going to be kind of harder to run the ball so it's really more up to you if you want to go down that route run stopper i'm not gonna lie run stopper is one thing that i will replace the double or nothing for i mean not double or nothing uh defensive rally for if you have it on a different person um run stopper and inside stuff together is actually very very good they do not spend a point on a shed attempt and they have a better chance at shedding against inside run plays basically run stopper it helps both so if you have no outsiders run stopper inside stuff double or nothing that would be a very great combination for somebody that's strictly high on a run. And then if you know that you're going to sit here and get a, um, what you call it, a shed on offense with a D tackle, or you don't even care if D tackle gets in. If he steps up, get a sack, cool, whatever. That's the stack that you can go ahead and get here. Now, momentum shift, I'm not going to lie, on a D tackle actually might be very, very good. Um, run stopper, once again, like I said, could be used on it. But for a D tackle standpoint, I'm not going to use unstoppable force because, like I said, a D tackle getting to the quarterback is kind of rare because it's like you'll get uh, you got linebacker blitzes getting through the A gap. You got edge threats or people on the edges getting sacks. The only reason why a D tackle will get a sack is if you bring in a linebacker and a disengage D tackle gets in or D tackle wins a one on one and gets to the quarterback. So I will most likely go for like the tackle for losses ones to make it a lot, a lot better. So blitz will be very, very good. Um, momentum shift, you got to get lucky. Um, relentless is really good. Reinforcement is really good. Um, and disrupting catches via tackle. So this becomes like a knockout. But yeah, in this point, 
I would say number one would have to be relentless. Number two will be blitz. Number three, momentum shift. Number four, well, actually tied for second and third will be run stuffer, depending on what your style of run is. But yeah, these these abilities right here definitely help you out with the D tackles. Now let's go ahead and give you guys a reason. Let me go ahead and give you guys a reason why the outside linebackers and the ends, it's kind of like, it works, but then it doesn't. But then I'll tell you the difference of how you can make it work just as better as a D end. All right, and now we are here with TJ Watt. And as you guys can see, this man gets the edge threats. He doesn't get edge threat elite. That's the one thing that you do, don't get at a left outside linebacker is edge threat elite. You still get the double or nothing, the inside stuffs, the run committed swim club, all this other stuff. But as you can see, he also is getting crusher. He's getting demoralizer. He's also getting unfakeable, bogo, spinner, adrenaline rush, short route KO, medium route KO, um, El Toro, um, lurker, pick artist. You get all these other abilities that you get to have, even flat zone KO on an outside linebacker. Um, it's a whole bunch of stuff that you get now. So not only are you getting pass, uh, what you call it? What is it basically called? Pass coverage um, abilities, but you're also getting power rush, speed rush, and run stopper. So basically it's the defensive end that can go out for passes and things of that nature. So like a Micah Parsons in this instant. As a matter of fact, yeah, I'm sorry, TJ Watt, for Steelers fans. Let me, let me just at least go to like, where is he at? Oh, they moved him. They moved him to end. Okay, well, you lucky. All right, we're going to TJ Watt. But yeah, that's most likely the best spot. If you want to put him on the line and do other things with him, this would be the best. So here at the line, because you can't get edge threat elite, you could do an edge threat. Like if you have nobody else on the D line and you have to have a left outside linebacker, I would suggest that more than the end because then you can go ahead and put him out in the pick artist and things of that nature lurking underneath. You can do that. So you can have an edge threat and an inside stuff. Double or nothing once again and you can go with a pick artist now this right here this pick artist low-key will usually go crazy on the d-line especially for like if you like somebody gets hit as he throws and it goes towards one of the people rushing pick artists will have them pick that off right so you could definitely go with a pick artist right there or you can go with a lurker if they get up to 90 pass coverage on the edge um Another thing that you could do to pair this up, if you want to go half pass, half run, like I said, the inside stuff, no outsiders, edge threat, and double or nothing. Um, if you want to go half pass, half, well, pass rush, half pass catching, you can go um, double or nothing, edge threat elites. You can keep the pick artist or do the lurker if you want to, and then go flat zone KO because then you'll only put them in a purple, anything underneath it will literally be right there. So it doesn't matter if they're getting into the middle of the field, they're gonna get in the middle of the field. I mean, not in the middle of the field, they're gonna sit here and try to get in the middle of the run. They can get to the middle of the run, get to the quarterback, do all that, and they can go out for passes as well. This is where the diversity comes in and the reason why outside linebackers is better than D ends. Like just move your D end with abilities up to left outside linebacker to get way more abilities and this will definitely help you out a lot more and to kind of help you out as well if you have two outside linebackers and two defensive ends you can do that in kind of like a four three even six one or four three formation where you could use outside linebackers at the end and then ends at the tackle and it will just go stupid because then you have every ability that you would need and it will help you out big time so yeah you can go edge threat double or nothing pick artist flat zone or instead of the flat zone you can go inside stuff once again you could man up somebody to the running back like i said and have a medium route ko that's this little big brained right there right so what normally i would do is have a outside linebacker or no no not li i left outside linebacker i will have an end on the d line matched to the running back so basically i would just man him up if he wants to keep trying to like pass it like pass it real quick to his running back 
I have a DN manned up to the running back, and he will go and either snag the ball from him, or if they run like a, a, a wheel route or a streak, he'll be kind of right there on the hip, but you gotta have to have somebody fast to sit here and do that with. So a medium route, short route KO on him will be a little sneaky play. Uh, edge threat, double or nothing, or you can just stick it with double or nothing, and then you can go full pass and go flat zone, medium route, pick artist, double or nothing. You can go instead of the pick artist lurker, like I said, or instead of that, you can go with run stopper. Once again, there's many different combinations you can do with this. You can even go crusher. I'm not gonna lie to you, crusher, if you put your tackling on aggressive and have crusher getting towards the quarterback, the quarterback will get fatigued every time he gets hit and probably will get knocked out for the whole game if you get a fatigued quarterback they will not be able to throw the ball at all at all um here you can't have a crusher i wish you could have crusher i mean not crusher i'm um, deflator there isn't a deflator here so that'll probably be like one thing that you have to look out for when you uh going through these abilities but a crusher it only works with fatigue penalties if you get hit with a hit stick so even if they get through you can just hit somebody with the running back they can get hit things like that this is a very nice one i love using crusher deflator like i was one of the first ones to use deflator at like a high level and like a lot of people were getting upset at that because then they couldn't switch in their running backs in because they'll feel like they only need one or two um could have switched you can't really switch a quarterback unless it's in cfm crusher is definitely something that you can use but um yeah but if you're going to like the real nice way of going about it edge threat double or nothing pick artist and then your fourth one is whatever you want like a flat zone um you can go ahead and use um one thing i realized there is no bogo i mean not bogo um there is no defensive rally there's no defensive rally so i mean i don't know we probably just gonna have to like rock out with it like have it on a d tackle or something of that matter but it's literally up to you how you want it to go um but here on the edge like i said you can use selfless selfless right here will pick everybody else that has an x factor into the zone so if you pair it up with like two um x factors of the safeties or two x factors on the actual d line that wants to get them better pass rush you can do that with them or you can go ahead and do it to the point where you're sacking a quarterback and you have to uh pass rush here so um this is either with hit stick tackles or this one is with a uh, pass rush you can do either one there's a zone hawk one there's um shut down so basically when these like if you have a linebacker that goes out in routes and you don't have them on the d-line you can have them do that as well so really it is up to you how you want to do it it's just mad <coughs> excuse me it's just mad versatile what you can do here with uh left outside linebackers and it's just really nice i feel like line left outside linebackers like the easily one of the best positions in the game defensively because they can go anywhere and you can make them any position you can make them into a defensive lineman you can make them into a linebacker and with the right abilities up here like short route pick artist mid zone and a mid zone ko you can do many different things with this man you can do many different things but those are the best abilities for the outside and now let's get into the middle linebackers man Next up here for the linebackers, man, it is completely up to you how you want to use your linebackers, but linebacker wise, it's kind of fun for me because either I'm using them or they're getting to the quarterback to do the dirty work for me. Linebackers is one of the most forgot about for uh, not formations, uh, positions in the game because they can't jump. If you have a linebacker that you're using that can't jump, then they really can't do anything. They really can't pick the ball off for you. And it's like, you know, what, what, what are they there for? Uh, the only reason why people use linebackers at this point was to stop the run or they could tackle better than how a safety would so at this point there is no lurk artist as you guys can see there is no lurk artist but there's a whole bunch of let's see what they have field general pass coverage and run stopper so the only thing that they will probably have for you to help you like on the d line it will probably be like a run stopper 
see what I'm saying? A run stopper. If you're going to blitz him, he won't get the shed attempts on a play. Um, unfakeable. They do have inside stuff, which is very, very good. You can put a linebacker in on the D-line, and you can have an inside stuff there. And you can do something like that. They have film study. They have enforcer. So, with ability, do not allow broken tackles while hit-sticking ball carriers, regardless of the runner's size or power. Enforcer actually changed their definition of what this is, actually. They don't allow broken tackles with hit sticking, when hit sticking ball carriers. Enforcer used to be when you hit stick them, it used to like give them fatigue. That's why Enforcer was so good, but Enforcer just basically became a secure tackler and things of that nature. So if you like have a Derrick Henry, Fred Warner will not miss a tackle if he has Enforcer on. So what you can do to make him a hard hitting safety that literally will give you like the biggest like downfall is this right here you get lumberjack crusher deflator and enforcer all together you will not be able to play the game for another two months okay like enforcer you won't break a tackle deflator like even on a non-conservative tackle you're going to get a uh, fatigue crusher a heavy fatigue if i hit stick you and then you might even fumble when i'm undercutting you like that's that's just nasty bro it's nasty business but um now let's go ahead and change it back up to the regular stuff so now we can go to show you guys what you can do as pass coverage slash run so what you could do you can have the run stopper on you can have a run stopper on so if they go and get into like a block they can go ahead and shed off of it because of the run stopper you can have them in a mid zone pick artist or lurker and then have uh actually you could have both pick artist and lurker um so basically he's in, he can go ahead and react with the lurker and then the pick artist he won't lose stamina and sometimes pick artist will have its own animation but it's not guaranteed all the time and then basically i think the last one is up to you unless you want to have closer persistent if they have an x factor things of that nature um but i personally like the flavor the flater crusher combination is very very good um or if you want to go full zone like literally have them out in the zone you can have flat zone and mid zone the flater and lurker you can have that i feel like this is one of the more high like highly used ones because either he's going to be out in a purple a blue or yellow you know what i'm saying either in the hook curls three wrecks um curl flats like same flats you can have them on all that and this would have worked as long as it's under 20 yards um, most likely we would have them on 5, 10, 15s anyway. So this would be a great combination to have deflator. Because as soon as they get hit with a little tackle, they're getting fatigued as well. And if they actually go out in that zone and knock it out, they could have a lurker and go and pick it off for you. So that's very, very good. Um, Avalanche only at 95 overall run stopper, which you have Avalanche. And I feel Avalanche is basically the best, if not... Yeah, I feel like it's the best X Factor to have because... It's basically, if you hit stick, it's a guaranteed fumble. And when you compare, I mean, and if you have these hit stick tackles with the deflator or the crusher, now he's going to instantly make you fumble whenever you have a hit stick towards him, right? Um, Mind Reader is basically a film study as an X factor. So basically you make a hit stick tackle, I can see your offensive play art. That means I don't need to have a, what you call, I don't need to have film study on it. I can go ahead and put other stuff on like this down here to have a film study as my X factor. Um, selfish, make a head stick tackle now everybody else is lit up. Um, shut down, basically forcing completions like that knockout. Now he can be like, whenever he goes towards this uh, linebacker, he's not going to get it. Momentum shift, same thing, knocks you out uh, the zone or lose progress towards it. So here in this spot, or zone hog, basically, if you put them in a zone coverage, they're not going to sit here and knock it out in zone. You have shutdown, basically, it's contested catches. It's like it doesn't really matter if it's zone or man is going to get knocked out. So number one thing that you'll have is avalanche, but I know a lot, a lot, a lot of linebackers will not be able to have it. So number one, most likely, might be mind reader. Um, number two, selfless. I'll put selfless up there because even though a lot of people wouldn't use a linebacker, um, selfless on the linebacker is like if you get a hit stick tackle with them, then everybody else that you need on the field is actually lighting up doing their thing. 
um and it definitely helps out in that aspect um number three you're gonna have a shutdown or a zone hawk depending on what you do and number four i'm probably gonna say um momentum shift so basically tied for number one is mind reader and avalanche mind reader and avalanche is basically perfect for you um but you know not a lot of people is gonna be a 95 run stopper like if you look at the linebackers not even they're at a 95 overall so it's definitely gonna be um Trying to get the avalanche, but if you have somebody who has avalanche, oh, it's done for. Like he only needs two more upgrades to get avalanche. That's why Fred Warner is literally the best in the game, hands down. He's the best linebacker in the game. But um, yeah, you can do it to stop the run. You can do it just to have like one thing, like a mid zone, um, a crusher, a no outsiders, and well, actually no, not inside stuff. A no outsiders. Do they have no outsiders? No, they have just run stopper. So basically, a run stopper, crusher mid zone lurker this is a very good one too but there's many different ways that you can go about it just open your eyes to different things that you can do and for something that you can grind for and just know even if you have low overalls at this point you still can use these for many different things like i said short route ko man i'm up to the running back get a nice little knockout right there demoralizer if you know somebody's gonna get hit with that uh excuse me if somebody gets hit with that uh the moralizer they're not going to get into that zone especially like a running back that's trying to get that freight train or trust or anything like that they get knocked out harder not get knocked out of the zone man up that persistent with that avalanche mind reader or anything you you'll be straight but now let's go ahead on to the cornerbacks right here with the cornerbacks short and simple to this point if you want to be in a man standpoint then that will mean this will be the best stack for you right here either it's either it's acrobat or pick art is completely up to you but deep zone short medium and a, a acrobat and a pick art is it's the best thing to have for a man if you want zone then you will have this flat zone mid zone deep out and acrobat and pick artist now what you could do is completely go knockout you can go medium deep out for both man and zone no not 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 short not short not short so you can have deep route and deep out zone ko medium route ko and mid zone ko but for me personally me personally if i am using a cornerback i'm using flat zone mid zone deep out and i'm using either a pick artist or an acrobat okay um this this right here basically is just telling me whatever comes to my side of the field or wherever I put them, which is in the slot or on the outside, is going to get knocked out no matter what. Basically, he just gets a whole knockout KO. Basically, how a deep route KO and um, Mutt is with Darren Woodson is the same thing with this stack is. So with the corners, the corners only stay on like basically one side of the field, and this is what they're using here. Or if they're in a slot anything that slot underneath middle of the field they got a lot more to cover than it would be with a deep corner so here in the corners on the outside i will say this would be the best stack if they are in the middle of the field and you are using slot cornerbacks flat zone mid zone and medium route ko i feel like this is the best because like i say you're the people in the slot is most likely on deep post crossers slants things of that nature so many at this point maybe a deep route will happen because it's 20 yards past the field or medium route just to keep it safe or you can do it just like this deep route medium route flat zone mid zone best thing to use um and plus if you're on match like a zone match these this will kick in more than the man ko's will so that means this will help you out even more there but um if you do feel like that you kind of need that lurky lurky put in the acrobat put in a pick artist definitely will work out for you but um yeah here for the uh x factors is no is no doubt it's just no doubt universal cover is the number one thing whether they are in man or zone you're going to get a knockout it doesn't even matter it's literally the number one thing so that's the number one thing that you have on your corners number two you're gonna have selfless same thing selfless and using on somebody else could do that uh, zone hawk is shut down is basically the same thing as universal coverage so basically it's up to you if you want to go full man full zone 
but universal coverage it doesn't matter if you put them in the man or zone they're going to get a knockout no matter what um and all the rest of these is just basically man or uh what you call it or you can be that weirdo and have reinforcements on because if you want to go for the run and they're in a the slot actually in the slot i would like reinforcements reinforcements in the slot basically is like if you force incompletions and tackle for losses whenever they want to run the ball they're going to get that uh what you call it they go to defeat the run block and catches via tackles so if they tackle you it's basically a knockout and um what you call it like a run stopper or something at this point so basically number one universal coverage number two i'm gonna put selfless number three reinforcements and then the rest is basically the same thing and just basically universal coverage split up into different formations i mean different abilities so universal coverage number one without a doubt number two selfless number three reinforcements and uh yeah so once again you can go all zone or all man or you can do some mix of man and zone and you can add the acrobat and things of that nature to it you could add a chuck out with your zones so basically short medium deep and chuck out because chuck out does give you a little bit of fatigue to the wide receiver when they're going down the field when they get bumped every single play so like if they're in press basically bench press will be the same thing as like man this is like the zone version of bench press because if they're in man and they were up here in front of your face and i'm pressing up on you i'm literally fatiguing you before you even go down the field and it's going to carry over to the next play this is the zones version of chuck uh bench press which is chuck out it gives you the fatigue after zone chuck so you can do this with all zone or you can literally change it to all man and go down that route and then put bench press on then that means we're playing cover two press cover two man shade it under two cover two man the whole damn game and you is not going to know what to do with your life especially with people that don't know how to beat man <sighs> man can get you some this, this this is like the this is crazy to see if you see all this on your on your corners it's, it's ridiculous so yeah that's what you would do with the corners now it's going to go over to the safeties and safeties it's not even at safeties as well it's when they play in a box as well we're gonna help you out with those two now here we are to the safeties man safeties is definitely going to be very easy for me because i do this a lot more than anything else basically you can go with this deep in deep out mid zone because most safeties up if they're playing safeties it's not going to come underneath 15 yards so deep out deep in mid zone anything 20 yards is basically going to get knocked out and then you can have your choice of either acrobat pick artist even a lurker if you wanted to but in a zone in the middle of the field then you know it's like mm, it's not really going to work out that well so you probably put have an acrobat or pick artist and if you want to add the deflator on there because after they get the catch and they tackle you for conservative tackle then you'll get fatigued so if the knockout don't work but then I'm sitting here trying to tackle you. Then the flader is going to kick in. And you're going to be like, why is he so tired at the catcher? Because I got snuck that deflect the deflator in there. Um, you can have a film study on. I don't know why you would have a film study on. But it's completely up to you. Um, if you want the man version of this, if you know the safety is going to be in a man, you can go ahead and do this. Short route, medium route, deep out. And acrobat, same thing as it would be with a corner. But if they are playing up top, you could man somebody up to medium, deep, you could have a mid zone on there as well and have the acrobat or whatever on there um you're gonna have a deep in a deep out a deep route and an acrobat or with the mid zone right there depending on where you want them to uh be manned up at but if you have a safety man uh cross man to somewhere else where a deep crosser is going to be that's where the 20 yard knockout is going to be at so you could definitely mix this up and make this a very very dangerous safety or you can go um completely different and do other things with it like you see they have no outsiders too because if, if you put you can put a safety in the slot and you can have a no outsiders on the outside too they'll get a shed on that corner and get towards that uh quarterback as well you can do that you can do it out my way so basically they'll block like receiver tight ends running backs anybody that's supposed to be out there that they're blocking out my way will bring that out you know what i'm saying um but there's many different things you can do um tip drill will feel like you need it um persistent you can always put that persistent on there if you don't know what else to do if they do have that x factor but you can always do that now here once again x factor same thing as corners universal coverage will be one number two will be selfless number three reinforcements and the rest is whatever you want to do but yeah that's what you can do here for the abilities and the safeties 
in either way but now we're going to try and show you guys the safeties if they're in a box now if they're in a box and you're using them 100 acrobat will be in there mid zone will be in there as well i highly suggest throwing a deflator in there as well and the flat zone ko these are probably the best to have with safeties underneath because sometimes you might even put them in like a deep third you can put a deep in ko in instead of the deflator so you're gonna have a deep end mid zone flat zone acrobat because those are even like either if you're using him or not you can go ahead and do that even with your user you can go ahead and get a knockout if you're using them just run into them that's where the knockout will be but um even if it's in man you can get the mid zone you can do medium route and short route knockout you can do that with acrobat or if you want to mix it up with everything in there you can go ahead and add this back in there medium route mid zone ko acrobat deflator you can do that but yeah man i said we're i think we've sped through the defensive side um anybody got any questions about anything that you want uh abilities wise for offensive defense we can go ahead and give that to you guys and if you guys have any questions with anything else with like how to set up your formations perfectly how to build up your rookies in the game how to do certain stuff let me know in the comments definitely here to help you guys out if you guys enjoy it make sure you guys sub man we're on the road to 1k make sure you guys follow the twitch the kick is going to be popping out right right here on the side um but other than that man it's been your boy underdog fly peace out